Universe. Greetings, I'm Shadow. And this is a very special video for something that I feel will be somewhat apparent once you realize what I'm holding behind my back. And it is this, a phenomenal replica and recreation of Imperius from my novel made by Kalamasil. The reason why I'm holding this, and the reason why I'm standing in this gym here, is that we are actually literally in the process of making a short film adaptation of my novel, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror. And in this gym, we are currently solidifying the choreography for the primary fight scene. And it's an awesome opportunity for me to actually demonstrate to you guys in real time what we're doing to show in the, uh, because there's, a, there's an unarmed portion of the fight scene, and there's a portion of the fight scene with, you know, the swords, to show you what we're doing to add more authenticity to the fight scene that I have often said has been lacking from many Hollywood fight scenes, and you've seen me criticize on this channel. I'd like to introduce you to the man who is running the show. This is the master choreographer and stuntman, Rodney. Rodney, if you could come here. And so, Rodney, could you just let everyone know, what's your experience as a stuntman? Because you've done some phenomenal stuff. Um, well, my experience as a stuntman, well, it's uh, 15, 20 years. I've been in business, 15 officially, like in the unions and everything. Uh, my first big contracts were doubling uh, J.B. Fox, then I did like a couple of Marvel movies, X-Men movies, Pompeii. Uh, last movies I did, the last movie I did actually was Borderlands with uh, Kevin Hart. I'm also one of his stunt doubles. And uh, yeah, I've been introduced to the stunt industry by somebody called John Fournette, which is a very big stunt coordinator here in Canada and is actually my mentor and taught me most of the things that I've done. And so, some of the stuff that Rodney has uh, choreographed for the unarmed portion of the fight scene is some of the best that I've seen, and I'm not kidding. And we're going to be having that in the short film. And we've got some just examples of the practice, just to see and uh, give you a taste of what's going to be appearing. It's phenomenal. Now, Rodney has asked me to consult on some of the key little things that we're going to be talking about to add that bit of extra historical authenticity. For instance, correct stances, okay? We're not going to be, you know, like telegraphing, over swinging our strikes. We're going to be doing the correct thing from the bind position. And just by adding these little flares, the uh, sword fighting aspect of this fight scene, I, I'm so excited for. And then in addition to that, Rodney has actually asked me to just work out a series of, say, eight moves in a row from a bind position, um, just to kind of demonstrate what could be done with real, like, superhuman master swordsmen. And uh, I, we're going to film the process to be working with the two other fighters, so uh, Dawson and, uh, well, it's... It's Anne Caroline, but she likes to be called Ace. And so I'm going to be working with Ace and Dawson here on the actual kind of position, some of the positions of... Don't you dare! <laughs> Don't you freaking <laughs> dare! That is an abomination! How dare you! We are, we are, there will be no reverse grits! No, I mean, no. I think we've been practicing his favorite move so far. It's the... It's just the... Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> This is what we're really not doing. We're specifically not doing this. So Dawson is going to be playing the role of Dalen, also known as Dalus the Conqueror. Dawson, do you want to feed us a line as Dalen? As um, We had a disagreement over the most appropriate storage for our swords. I insisted it was up their asses, but we settled on through their heads instead. A very classic Dalen line, and it's literally like, mm. so Dawson can just nail the kind of snarky arrogance, but also the intensity. And so I'm so excited for you guys to see Dawson in action as Dale as the Conqueror. And then Ace here is going to be playing Jenna, and they're going to have a bit of a, a bit of an exchange of fight scene. Yeah. And so this is where I come in, and this is a bit of a dream come true, where I'm actually going to help them understand just rest positions of correct posture, correct stances there, and also utilizing the sword to the, to the appropriate level that it could be used and what was used historically, but we're also, we understand this is a film, and so we're gonna purposely over dramatize, dramatic, make something, I'm trying to say, make it more dramatic. Exaggerate. Exaggerate, accentuate. accentuate certain movements so it looks more dramatic on screen, but founded on the foundation of more authentic swordsmanship practice, okay? And, uh, and so, as I explain things to these two wonderful people, you'll get to see it as well, what the thought process that we're working through, and also some of the specific choreographed moves that 
you will see in the shadow of the concrete, and it's one of my favorite things, that, like, just to demonstrate, I'll demonstrate one of the things that we're gonna be working in, because this is legitimately to address one of my biggest pet peeves. Who would like to demonstrate the biggest pet peeve? Do you want to read uh, You I've, know this. I've been nailing the pet peeves. <laughs> so, have you, tell me if you've seen this in any movies at all. Ready? It's like, and they're usually over like, oh, 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 I hate you. Oh. You were supposed to do that. That's what would happen. That's what if would you really say. happen. This is what I'm teaching her, and then she just used it against me. Because like I know something the reason why okay. that is so dumb, this is called being in the bind. And from this position being in the bind, there is so much you can do to kill your opponent. And if someone was being stupid just holding a static position like that, there's any number of things your opponent can do. Just hit me. He's there. And so, to, to kind of, not overcorrect, but to show the level of the, what <laughs> sword choreography has been missing, we're actually going to try and choreograph a series of moves all from the bind, where it's going to be in a position and then one of the opponents is going to reposition and the swords are not going to lose contact with each other. Reposition, so get a thing, you push it out, and it's going to click. It's already looking really dynamic, I'm really excited. And this is to show that there is something so much better that you can do than just locking swords and looking constipated. <laughs> so the thing that we want to consider is what stance would the characters naturally adopt based on their personality and fighting style. Now Jenna is more intense, she's dedicated, she wants to win and she is expecting Dalen is going to, is going to be a very tough opponent and so she's serious and so she's adopting a higher guard position, sword prevent, uh, presented forward with a cross guard high to be able to you know, protect incoming strikes. Dalen on the other hand is not taking this seriously, he's a master, he knows he is so his position is lower, and so yeah, it'll be up on there. And so there's a couple of very subtle things that we're going to work our best at trying to do. Because uh, Ace and Dawson, what, ex what experience have you had in swords and so far? I have held a sword for the first time in my life yesterday here at this gym. <laughs> um, I did a fencing duel uh, when I did a play of Sense and Sensibility. I've taken probably anywhere from eight to a dozen longsword demon classes, beginner level. That was two years ago. I haven't done a whole lot since. <laughs> and so they're doing phenomenal with the experience they have at the moment. And I'll be doing my best in there. Like the effort that they're putting in is just absolutely amazing. To try and convey really subtle but important things. For instance, just the position of how you hold the sword conveys strength and also kind of competence to the blade. And so from uh, from uh, Jenna's first thing, her first engagement is going to be a feint and then a downward strike like this. And just the position like this is going to be really important to convey structure and strength. And there's a big difference if I'm doing this compared to this. So there's also a very um, different level of difficulty in the arm strength needed for that very specific <laughs> And these are like swords, but when you hold, you're holding this up for like hours on end, it can get rather tiring. So I'm going to step in and we're literally going to be brainstorming and stepping through each move as we figure out this exchange from bind position that is going to demonstrate the possibility of what you can really achieve when you approach sword choreography with the mindset of being more authentic and realistic, showing proper... It's going to be good. She's actually going to... So you're going to snatch your right? down like it's gonna hit and you're seeing it then you quickly raise the last minute. Alright? Because this is again what I love about. So from this position is really especially if he's like can't get his head. Yeah. But if I switch my angle and then now you now, now you I can yeah. again so this is about using the Yeah. And that's a beautiful move actually so where this position she's gonna come down. Oh, <laughs> See, wow. The move works. That's exactly what happens if, if, you, if you don't defend against it. That's why that is it. That move where I yeah. so it works. <laughs> so you're gonna yeah, want to down, yeah. down first. Now that was too soon because it, the audience they, that would look like a why would you do that? So. Okay, you just started to dip when I. Leave. 
So I'm thinking, instead of lifting up, just for the dramatic tension, to show that it's really good hip, you're gonna go like that. You can actually step. Uh, 
I can't follow it. I can't follow what's happening. I'd have to in order. Order. Like these yeah. eight motions will move very fast, like in ending, and it'll be over in five, ten seconds or this. Yeah. Maybe twelve. Twelve seconds. But it will look beautiful. Maybe fifteen seconds. Twenty seconds? <laughs> um, so we're breaking for lunch, but we have established the primary sequence for this exchange of engagement. And uh, it has been phenomenal, like an absolute highlight for the experience. And uh, as you, I hope, have been able to see, just by uh, focusing on some basic fundamentals in stances, but also utilizing the weapon as we learn in you know, historical sources to be able to strike with the back edge, utilizing it, and uh, then paying it <laughs> um, attention to what you, like this is all in the bind, that entire sequence, the swords never broke until the very end. To, and I love that because just like, this, this, this is what you can do from the blind in if you had like, in, in reality, I'll, I'll never see a fight sequence like this in reality play out because we're not that good. But because these are masters in a fantasy setting, we can pre-plan, we can create a fantastical sequence that has very authentic movesets throughout each one. And uh, it's just it's beautiful. Um, so, here's a bit of a sneak peek to what we hope to put in uh, Shadow of the Conqueror, and uh, I hope you're excited, I'm very excited, and also a demonstration of what I've been saying for years, that you can incorporate more realistic sword, sword style, like swordsmanship, in a very fancy, fast-paced action fight scene, and it elevates, it makes it better, and I hope we've been able to demonstrate it. Even though you haven't seen it fast, we'll, we'll, we'll get very good at this, and you'll see the finished product when the, um, uh, when the movie is done, the film is done. I hope to see you there. Until that time, farewell.